Welcome to Ezekiel Academy YouTube channel. In this lecture, I want to examine IFRS 9 financial instruments. This is my third video on financial instruments, but the second video on financial on IFRS 9. The first video I've examined IES 32 financial instrument presentation. In the second video, I've examined financial instruments, IFRS 9. Measurement of equity instruments, equity financial instruments. In this third video, I want to examine the measurement of debt financial instruments. Debt instruments. Debt instruments. Investment in debt instruments of other entities, such as bonds or loan notes or redeemable. Preference shares. That is said to be debt financial assets or debt instruments. I've told you the debt instruments or debt financial instruments is an investment in debt instruments of other entities, such as bonds or loan notes or redeemable preference shares. Debt instrument can be measured in one of the three ways listed below. Measurement of debt instruments. Measurement of debt instruments. So if I say debt instruments, I mean debt financial assets. Debt financial assets. Can be measured in any of these ways. Number one, at fair value. Fair value through Profit or loss. Fair value through profit or loss. The second method of bearing debt financial assets is amortized cost. Cost. Fair value through other. Comprehensive income. Fair value through other comprehensive income. These are three ways. These are the three ways of measuring debt financial assets. Just like the equity financial assets I've examined in my earlier video, the default remain the same. The default is fair value through profit or loss. Fair value through profit or loss. This means if examiner is silent, if you are not being told whether the investment to be classified as fair value through other comprehensive income, or uh, if they did not meet the conditions or uh, the, the, the business model test or uh, contractual cash flow cash size test, which I've, uh, which I've examined in this video, then you should know that the investment will be classified as fair value through profit or loss. So that is how it is always be. But if they should be, if they will be classified as amortized cost or fair value through other comprehensive income, they have to pass through, through two tests, which I'm about to examine. The two tests are the business model test. I've told you for an instrument to be classified at amortized cost or fair value through other comprehensive income. I said they must pass through one business model test. Business model test. Number two, contractual. Contractual cash flows that are statistics. Test. These are the two tests they must pass through. So we are starting with the amortized cost. Amortized cost. 
business model tests as applicable to amortized cost business model test as applicable to amortized cost it means the entity must must intend to hold the investment in maturity the entity entity must intend to hold the investment to maturity this condition must be met that is the motive the motive of holding that investment must be to maturity not with the intention of reselling it number two contractual cash flow cast characteristic test contractual cash flows characteristics test if you look at the cash flows that are normally associated with the loan are usually repayment of principal repayment of principal and uh, interest anytime you have loans these are actually the cash flows so for investment to be i mean contractual cash flow cash IC test the contract terms must be solely of the principal and interest for investment to be classified at amortized cost interest income is usually calculated at its effective interest rate amortized cost note the following interest income interest income the one that will be recognized in the statement of profit or loss interest income is usually calculated calculated at effective effective interest rate that is the rate to use in calculating the interest that will be charged to the statement of profit or loss the value of the asset at the year end is usually calculated with amortization table the value of the asset at the year and is usually calculated usually calculated with the amortization table so amortization table will appear just so you have here where interest is payable in area interest payable in areas if you say interest is payable in area it means at the end of each year if interest is payable in area it means the interest is payable at the end of each year so amortization table now we have it just have here the opening balance opening balance then interest income income calculated at effective interest rate interest received received calculated at coupon rate then you have the closing balance closing balance this is the format for amortization table where interest is payable in areas example a company invests five thousand dollar in 10 percent loan notes the loan notes are repayable at a premium after three years 
The effective rate of interest is 12%. The company intends to collect the contractual cash flows, which consists solely of repayments of interest and capital. I have, I have therefore chosen to record the instrument at amortized cost. What amount will be shown in the statement of profit or loss and statement of financial position for year one to three? Now, the word invest is there. The word invest here shows that this is a financial asset. Loan loss is a debt instrument. So it shows that this is investment in a debt instrument, which is a financial asset, not a liability because of the word invest. But if this had been an issue, if you have a company issued 5%, 10% loan notes, you know that it is a liability. You see the word issue. But because of the word invest, I've told you that whenever you see the word invest or purchase or acquire, you know it is an asset. So when you invest in an asset, so you were told the loan notes are repayable at a premium after three years. So the effective rate of interest is 12%. The company tends to collect the contractual cash flows, which consists solely of the payment of interest and capital. These cash flows have met the condition for amortized cost. So that means you are going to use amortized cost. What amount will be shown in the statement of profit or loss? Now let's have statement of profit or loss extract. For the year ended. So the year end, we have three years because you have to, for a statement of profit or loss and statement of financial position for year one to three. So now let's have year three, year two, and year one. Now let's have workings. Workings, loan, notes, amortization, table. For amortized costs, I've told you, you must prepare the amortization table. Here, yeah. we have opening balance, balance brought forward. We have interest income because this is a financial asset. Interest income. Then we have interest received. Then we have closing balance. Remember, I've told you interest income will be calculated at effective interest rate. Effective interest rate of what is the effective interest rate back to the question the effective rate of interest is 12 percent this is the effective interest rate this is the coupon rate so effective rate is 10 percent and 12 percent effective rate is 12 percent coupon rate rate of 12 percent and 10 percent the interest received will be calculated at the coupon rate, while the interest income will be calculated at the effective interest rate. So the year one, how much is the fair value of the loans? The loans is 5,000. We have 5,000. You calculate 12% of 5,000. 12% of 5,000, that gives us 600 naira. The interest received, 10% of 5,000, that will be 500. Then, if this is A, this is B, and this is C, then the closing balance will be A plus B minus C. 500 plus 600, that is 
5,600 minus 500, that will be 5,100. Year two. This will not be the closing balance for year two, 5,100. 12% 12 of 5,100. That will be 612. The interest received is always calculated on the nominal value. If that one will not change. 10% of 5,000. It will still remain 500. You don't need to calculate 10% of 51. No. It is always calculated on the nominal value. 10% of the nominal value, which will still remain 500. 612 plus 5,100 minus 500. The closing balance is 5,212. That will be the opening balance for year three. 5,212. The closing balance is the opening balance. Then 12% of this. That is 625 approximately. Then you were told the loan loans are repayable at a premium after three years. Then at the end of three years, the loan loans will be repaid. Premium means the amount that will be repaid will exceed this. So, six, five, two, one, two, five thousand two twelve plus six two five. There you have 5,837. That will be repaid. This plus this. 5,212 minus uh, plus 625. That gives us 5,037. Then if that is repaid, then you'll be left with the name balance. This 5,837 comprises comprises The nominal value of 5,000. It comprises of the nominal 5,000. The interest that will be received. Interest of 500. And then premium. You know the gross amount is 5,837. 5,837. That means the, this is 5.5. Five. The premium is 3.37. Three, so that is the composition of the 5,037. Then you are to, the way I find that what amount will be shown in the statement of profit or loss. So the interest income will be shown in the statement of profit or loss. You have interest income. Year one, 600. Year two, 612. Year three, 625. 600, 612, and 625. That is the statement of profit or loss extract. Then, a statement of financial position for year one to three. Now, let's have statement. Of financial position extract as at the year end. They have year three, year two, year one. Remember, this is a financial asset. Then, under no current asset, no current. Asset. It is a long time asset because at the end of year one, you know it will be it will be redeemed in year three. So the year, the year, the the future year before redemption is still more than one year at the end of the year one. So uh, you have it as non current asset five thousand one hundred investment in loan notes.
in loan notes. Year one, 5,100. Then by year two, you are left with only one year before redemption. So that means you are going to have it as current asset. So current asset. So investment in loan notes. Investment in loan notes. In year two, you have 5,000. 5,212. So, this marks the end of the solution to the question. In my next video, I will examine the financial liability recognized at fair value through other comprehensive income. Please make sure you drop the love emoji. Also, share the video with others. Thanks for watching, Ezekiel.